Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to put together a guide as to how to craft the best lightning strike rings you can do on approximately a 120 chaos budget. Now this is not necessarily going to fit every lightning strike build, and if you're playing a poison based build, you might be able to use some of the themes that are used in this craft, but you don't actually want this craft yourself. Likewise, you don't want this if you are converting your lightning damage in any appreciable fraction to cold, which is sometimes done on this build, but in that case you're probably using Call of the Brotherhood anyway. But now that we've gotten rid of everyone that is playing either Chaos Damage or Cold Damage on their Lightning Strike build, well, let's talk about what you're looking for with a Lightning Strike ring. One of the most powerful ring affixes that's available is Increased Effect of Non-Damaging Ailments, because you're going to be incidentally shocking, and this ends up being a considerable damage multiplier. Secondly, another really good mod is Curse Enemies with Conductivity on Hit, with 32% Increased Effect. The former of these is from the Redeemer influence pool, the latter is from the Crusader influence pool. And we're simply going to take advantage of how cheap Awakener Orbs are today in order to get them both together. For those of you that have never used Awakener's Orbs before, what they do is they allow you to merge together two influenced items. It's very important that the second item that you click ends up being the one that the most information is kept from. So if we merge together this Miracle Loop Bone Ring and this Victory Eye Amethyst Ring, and we click Miracle Loop first and then Victory Eye second, the final product will remember Victory Eye's item level, which is 84, and its base type, which is Amethyst Ring, which is a good thing because Amethyst Rings are probably the strongest base in the game for rings at the moment, although you can certainly use an Opal Ring if you prefer, or a Vermilion Ring, or something else entirely. And it will also remember permanent changes that might have been made to the item, such as whether or not it's been affected by Blessed Orbs, this is currently the worst possible role for an Amethyst Ring, and also any quality that's been applied to it it will forget about any quality that's been applied to Miracle Loop. So what I've done is I've gone through listings that are on trade, looking for items that already have 22% increased effect of non-damaging ailments. That's 21 to 25%, and that have no other influence mods on them, and I've picked them up in trade. These cost me between 8 and 12 chaos each when I was looking for them, and it seems like there's a pretty big number of them available. That is Redeemer-influenced Amethyst Rings. Now, if you're not able to pick this up in trade, your alternative to roll this item yourself is going to be an average of 240 alteration orbs. So it's certainly not cheap, and it is cheaper to trade for it, especially given that you're going to need the Redeemer influence base you want as well. Next, the rarer of the two mods, which is the Conductivity on Hit, which is two and a half times as rare as this Redeemer mod, I just picked up any bad ring I could find that has it. Note that this is with 32% increased effect. You can also get a worse version of this, which has only 20% increased effect. Broadly speaking, people don't want this mod on Bone Rings, and so Bone Rings tend to be the cheapest. Now, you want to just make very certain that there are no other influence mods. So we have Seething from the Classic Mod Pool, Polished Thirsty, of the Crusade, but that's Conductivity on Hit, of the Volcano, and of Excitement. Absolutely nothing else is from an influence mod pool. If it was a Crusader influence one, it would either say of the Crusade as its name, or Crusaders. Likewise here, there are no other mods that are influenced. Then we'll check the same thing for the Redeemer ones, which will either say Redeemers or Of Redemption. Very important to check this because if you do have more than one influence mod on, then when you do the final step, there is an RNG chance as to which one transfers over, and the other ones will probably be lost. So now all it is is as simple as applying the Awakener's Orbs. You'll notice I've set up two of them here. That gives us more chance to get a decent one. So the item that we click first is destroyed. All of its base information is lost. And then the second item is the one that we keep. So this has gone 6 mod, which is about a 1 in 12 outcome chance when you apply an Awakener's Orb. This is an unfortunate outcome. What we want is to have 5 or fewer mods on the item in total, with at least one empty prefix. This item could conceivably be used as is, although there are some weak mods on it that you wouldn't mind seeing deleted by an Annulment Orb. That's really up to you. You can use this as it is, or you can go further if you're willing to invest more currency and take a little bit of a risk of losing your item. Next. We'll Awaken Azorb, Soul Twirl, and Torment Wall. And here we've got space for a new mod on the item, which is what we want to see. We've got space for a prefix. At this point, really, it's as simple as just going up to your crafting bench and saying, you know what, I want to put some life on this. That's what this item needs. Uh, you can't put a massive amount of life, but you can put a bit. And if you roll terribly like I just did, you can just re-roll over it. 52 is good enough, so we're going to keep that. And that is how I would go about crafting a lowish budget ring that is conductivity on hit and increased effect of non-damaging ailments. This is ideal for a Lightning Strike character that is hitting. If you want to take this further and invest more currency, the next step is going to be to apply suffixes cannot be changed to the item, and then apply a Veiled Chaos Orb. A Veiled Chaos Orb will add a couple of mods to the item, 
leaving it with four mods total two thirds of the time, five mods total a quarter of the time, and six mods total one twelfth of the time. And one of the new mods that's added will be a veiled mod. These tend to be pretty good. And that's why this tends to be one of the best options that you've got for improving the items. Alternately with this one, you could actually take this to an Ashling Slam and do a Veiled Slam, which is one of the options that you've got there that again could destroy the item, but could also improve it further. So there's lots of ways you could take these from here, but this is the lower budget approach. Anything you're going to do beyond this point is going to cost you a couple of Divine Orbs at least. Mega Vile Orbs have interesting results.